toxic benchmark culture. I hate it. A new product drops and people just rush to post about how it's bad, broken, burning, not a big enough bump. And then other people see all this, get super mad angry and come over to my comments, our comments, our socials, all the rest of us and demand to know why we're not addressing these controversies. And then some of us do. We post even more about it, about stuff that 90% plus of which is utterly stupefyingly meaningless, if not completely made up. We perpetuate it, we validate it. It's gotten to the point where I'm reconsidering ever doing a tech review again. No, no fancy editing. This one is straight from the heart and I wanna talk with you about it. I wanna figure out, I need to figure out why. Why is there so much emphasis on these benchmarks? Why does it have such hyper sensationalized catastrophized packaging and why do I think it's so damaging to basically everyone involved? Let's back up. The first thing to understand is that benchmarks absolutely positively have their place in reviews and in all product coverage like zero to 60 on cars or max towing capacity on trucks. But it's a very small, very specific place that over the years we've just lost any and all control over and turned into this enormous green rage bait monster. I said no fancy editing. Back in the day, major tech publications had dedicated labs for testing all of the stuff, staffed up with the best and the brightest, and they wrote custom code to interrogate everything. And they really understood at a deep level about electronics and system architecture. And Nantech is still like that. So are a bunch of Chinese channels. Maybe LTT Labs will be as well. But those have become the exceptions because now anyone, everyone can do benchmarks on easy mode thanks to all of these prepackaged, downloadable, click once, run and done apps and games. The ones that'll pull basic numbers in just about the time it takes for whatever tests they've got templated out to complete out. And that's created this culture of benchmark LARP, like literally live action role play where people who would never normally even dream of marking a single bench all of a sudden want to post all of the scores over and over again, no matter how little context they can actually derive or provide from them. And paradoxically, even though it's never been easier to run benchmarks, it's never been harder to actually run them in a meaningful way because modern SOCs and APU architectures like Apple, AMD, and even Intel are now rolling out are just so much more complicated in terms of figuring out and targeting things like efficiency cores versus performance cores and compute engines versus accelerators. Same with memory and storage systems, which have everything from compressors to controllers built in at the silicon level. But because these benchmarks are so damn easy to run and so many people are now running them and posting them, we've somehow collectively decided just zeitgeisted that they must mean more. They must be more important now than they ever were before to the point where we have phone makers cheating, actively cheating, like excluding benchmark apps from performance management. Clearly even Geekbench thought it was a bit cheeky as they've now permanently delisted Samsung devices from using their service. And we have computer makers goosing voltage beyond what enclosures can handle without liquid cooling. Which I normally don't like doing in a small ITX case like this. It's just messy in there, but I had to do it because I couldn't find anything else that worked. Just so they can win longest bar on the chart cred for a few months. And we have media actually pre-planning epic fail posts, dropping ultra heavy workloads on ultralight machines or claiming bugs or flaws or lies or fires without stopping to consider context or relevancy just to be first or fast or to just flood all our feeds, which FYI is not hard at all because anyone who knows how any of this stuff works, anyone who works in this industry knows how to hurt it, how to make it cry, any chipset, any thermal system, any memory or storage architecture. It's literally super easy, purely an inconvenience, but it's also not anything 99% of actual humans using any of these actual machines would ever encounter in the real world. So what's the point? That brings us to the second thing we need to understand. Views on tech videos are down right now. I'm not even talking compared to the 2020 surge when everyone was stuck at home, binging every new release and just 
slurping up back catalog in between, titles and thumbs saying product performs as expected, or new chipset exactly what it's supposed to be, or perfect for intended customer, just isn't gonna turn any of that around, isn't gonna get any of us to click, which I get, I totally get. I like the views as well, please give me more. But at a certain point, it crosses the line. It stops even being misinformation and verges on disinformation, where it not only hurts the people who might legitimately benefit, might be really well served by these products, but it weaponizes them to go out and spread these conspiracies to harass reasonable reviewers and to hurt even more people. And I really, truly believe that with great audience comes great responsibility and that reviews, product coverage, all of it comes with a duty of care to do no harm, even to ourselves, because there's just no longevity to rage bait. The more desperate we become to get clicks, the more desperate we have to keep becoming to keep getting them because people get desensitized. So the rage, the bait, it has to keep getting bigger, hotter, angrier, even as the clicks inevitably keep getting smaller and it becomes this vicious cycle. And I get it, I really truly get it because I felt it and I hated the way it made me feel about my own videos, videos that I used to love to make. And it's why I don't do leak bombs anymore or don't make a mistakes anymore. And it's one of the major reasons I'm changing the whole entire type of tech videos that I'm making on this channel. And I'll share the other reasons as soon as I can, promise. But for right now, I wanna share a way that you can get even more involved in tech, how you can help turn things around, especially the future of tech and everything that's coming next from neural networks to machine learning and algorithms, all with this video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant has a growing catalog of courses, including computer science and math, physics, logic, quantum mechanics, game theory, and so much more all specifically crafted to help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in visual, interactive, hands-on ways. And all the lessons are thoughtfully broken up into bite-sized pieces so you can learn at your own pace. No pressure, zero pressure. Like if you wanted to learn to code, but you've just been put off by overly complicated traditional computer programming courses, well, Brilliant has actual, fun, interactive challenges that let you shift blocks of pseudocode around, receiving immediate feedback and getting results. You feel like you're solving puzzles, gaming even, but the whole entire time, you're learning how algorithms work. And once you know that, coding becomes way less intimidating and way more accessible. Because here's the thing, everyone, everyone starts somewhere and you can get started right now, today, for free. Just visit brilliant.org slash Tony Ritchie or click the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Just click that button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this video, which explains in far greater detail how modern SOCs actually work. So just hit up that video and I'll see you there.